Hey everyone, it's Caitlin coming at you with my notes again, but I got like pages and pages on notes this time. But I want to give a shout out really quick before we get into it for Biscuit G on YouTube. Go check him out. He gave me the idea this for this video and he has been super helpful. So I wanted to just show you how much I appreciate you. So thank you for all of your advice and the idea to make this video. So with the spoilers for the new commander precons coming out this year i thought it would be a good idea to review the ones that i have played i bought them last year and i have a few other mixed in ones that i've also played or bought so i'm going to do an overall review of about four commander decks so i've played edgar markov kalia the vast marin and the ur dragon deck also so I will be going over all of those I'll tell you three cards that I like three cards that I would take out and rate it out of five and if I would buy it again so let's get right into it I'm gonna start right off the bat with Marin let's just start off with a good one because she is my favorite I'm I'm gonna spoil that right now she's my favorite out of all four of these decks probably out of all the pre-builds she is a deck that I actively play still to this day she was easily upgraded to such a competitive deck, but like right out of the box, she was so competitive and she could she could hold up, she could win really strong. Um, that was the first graveyard deck that I ever played and it was really nice to start to learn how that works and to understand my love for graveyard because I really do love that deck. I love the experience counter mechanic experience counters are just so good. In Marin, you only need to get her experience counters to like five, six max. You don't really run any like seven drops or eight drops. Like she pretty much max out at six and then you're good. Like there's easy combos that you can get going to get her started. Like if you get secure tribe elder, just get it out on the second turn. You know, turn four, get Marin out, sack it, go get a land, get an experience counter at the end of the turn, bring it back to your hand, play it next turn, sack it again, get another experience counter, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Like, it's so easy to get the engine started with, especially that card in this deck, but it's just very easy to get her going and to get her started. We are going to start off with the cards that I would take out, the three cards that I would take out of this deck, so... Viridian Z-Lot is my first one. I would take this out because it is pretty much the same effect as Secure Tribe Elder, except for it's worse. It doesn't have a built-in sack outlet, so I don't really need this card in here. I already have something that is exactly like it, but better. Like, I already have the better version of this card in the deck, so why do I need that? Like, I have so many other cards that I would rather play in this deck that it's easily replaceable with something better. My second one is Blood Baron, but this just feels like a very subpar sack outlet. They're a lot better and a lot cheaper overall than this card. I'd rather play like Vasir here and get to Scry or play Carrion Feeder and get counters. So they're a lot better and a lot cheaper in the ways of mana cost. Like the Seer Seer and Karen Feeder are both one black mana, so I would definitely prefer to run those over this card. There's just better versions of this card. That's all that that comes down to. My last card of the cards that I would take out is Great Oak Guardian. This card is expensive. For Marin, where you play like five is pretty much where, you know, you want to cap out at. This is six mana, but I have to get my counters on Marin so high which I can't always do that quickly. I let all of my stuff die, and I don't really have a ton of board a lot of the time, so like, this is just too expensive for me to abuse a enter the battlefield trigger out of, you know? It doesn't feel like this is the best card for this deck. It feels like I could definitely run something better. Okay, we're gonna move right into some MVPs of this deck. So we're gonna start off with my cloth. I have grown a very strong love for this card. It's still in this deck. I love it. It is so much fun in the terms of playing. I love the mechanic devour. Not only do you get counters, but you get a way to sack your creatures, which gives you more experience counters. So usually when I do this, like my cloth has devour too. Usually when I do this, 
I set up to sack like three or four creatures so I can just get married to the level experience counters that I'm really looking to have right now and I can have, I can get eight counters on my boss. Like that is absurd. So not only do you get a huge creature, but you get four experience counters for Marin. Like it, it sets you up for nothing but positivity. <laughs> like it sets you up for nothing but success. You get two counters for every creature that you sack and this is a deck where you're kind of aiming to sack everything that you can. So this performs. My next card is Bloodspore Thranax. Again, this card has Devour, not like I'm only listing the cards with Devour, but I've played this deck a lot, so I'm listing off cards that I have played and had success with, and um, this is a really good buff card. This lets your creatures enter the battlefield with that many counters, so this is kind of at the point where, you know, you want to start building your board, you have all of, you know, this is the point where you want to start building your board, you have your engine going, you have your experience counters, you are starting to build a board presence, you have your way to sack things, you have your way to bring things out of the graveyard, like you have your engine going. This is when that card comes out because it starts to build your board presence. It lets things come in with counters on it, it buffs them, it lets them be bigger so you can swing. Because most of the creatures in this deck, let's face it, they're smaller because their whole ability is meant to be, you know, used and done. But that's why you run cards like this, so it buffs them. Uh, the next one, this one is my favorite. Uh, coming across this card was my happy moment. Okay, this is a game winner. Pathbreaker, Pathbreaker Evex win. This is again in, uh, when I want to start building my board presence card. When I have my board flooded with creatures because I keep bringing stuff out of my graveyard and I keep casting stuff from my hand, I bring this card out and I just give my creatures all of the buff that I could give them and I just swing over everyone and win. Giving all of your creatures lethal da- like this is giving you lethal damage if you play it in the time it's meant to play it. If you play it when your board is filled, then you pretty much win the game because everything has trample. So my rating of Marin is I would give her a four out of five and I would for sure buy this again. So the next deck I'm going to review is the Dragon's deck and this is the first commander deck that I've ever played. So I'm pretty excited to do this review. I played this deck so many times, I learned this deck in and out. Okay, I loved this deck and I ran over everyone with this deck. Um, a little backstory before I go over this. When I first started playing Commander, uh, me and Jordan, my fiance, we were playing with our friend Kevin and our friend Zach and um, we hadn't played yet but the Commander Precons last year were coming out and we looked at them and we were like, okay, this is a cheap way to get into Commander, to get into the format. That's why I love the fact that they do these decks is because it gives people outside of the format a way to dip in. You know, we hadn't really played before, I hadn't played at all, and I didn't know how to build my own Commander deck, I didn't know what I wanted, I had never played the format before, so this was just getting us started. This was the first Commander deck that I ever played, and... I won with it a lot. It's five colors, which is like a lot, but I made this work, okay. We're gonna start with the cards that I would take out, which I would like to point out. I'm doing creatures on all of these for the cards that I would take out, but they pretty much got all of the main dragons. They got all of the main, the main dudes, but there are a, just a few, you know, the three. There are a few that are like not very good that I feel like just dragged me down when I drew them in the game that I prefer to have taken out so we're gonna start with Boneyard Scourge. This is a smaller power and toughness of the rest of the dragons and it's only like ability is to bring it back if it dies and it's just kind of like I would rather play any other card because all of the other dragons in here are so good with like their abilities their attack abilities that I draw this card and I don't, I'm unhappy. I don't like top decking this card because this isn't what I want. I don't really care about bringing this back when it's the lowest 
power toughness of all of my creatures. So it's like, is it is it worth bringing back? You know, Territorial Hellkite is the next card that I chose, and the reason behind it being, I don't like that the attack is random. You have to randomly pick someone, and if you can't attack that person, it can't be the person you attacked last turn. So if you can't attack that person, then you have to tap him and you just don't get to attack with him. And I just don't like that. Like, I don't like, I don't like that I don't get to do anything with him if I, you know, get the unlucky draw. So for this deck, I only came across two cards that I wanted to take out because I'm overall pretty happy with the creature base that they gave me. Those are really the only two cards that I found that I didn't really like. So we're going to move on to some MVPs and start with Tyrant's Familiar. This is a card that I play even in other decks and I really like it. Um, Lieutenant is pretty cool being able to get a little bonus factor on your creature if you control your commander, which all of my decks are decks where I want to control my commander. They're decks where I want to get them out as soon as I can because they benefit me greatly. They lift my deck up. You know, they help me out. And so most of the time I do have my commander, so this card does really help me out. And not only getting plus two, plus two, but getting to deal seven damage to something before the attack goes off is really awesome. It's Barra Hellkite, and boy, let me tell you some stories about this card because, oh my god, this was the first card that I played that I was like, I think I realized how absurd it was to play this card in a dragon tribal deck is so much fun. The first time I played this, I already had a flooded board of dragons and I was just swinging and making all the 6-6 six, six dragons. I, it's so much fun to play this deck. It gives you 6-6 six, six dragons whenever a dragon you control attacks. That is so absurd. Just flood my board of dragons. Any red deck, I can guarantee you, will always have this card in there for me because even if oh, that's the only dragon that I play in that deck, it's still good because it's still giving you a token for each dragon that is attacking. Nothing but good with this card. This card is the real MVP. This card is the MVP of this entire video. Shout out to Utvara Hellkite. My third one is actually a combination of two cards that I really enjoy together. Palace Siege choosing cons with uh, Scion of the Ur Dragon. The combination of these with the Sci with Scion of the Ur Dragon, I can pay to to search up any dragon permanent card that I want and put it into my graveyard and that card becomes a, to a token copy of the card I just put in my graveyard. With Palace Siege, I get to take something out of my graveyard at the beginning of my upkeep. So every single turn I can just be searching up on my deck the things that, the cards that I want and on my board and get a token copy of them get the card the next turn and play the card the next turn. So it's just giving me exactly what I want. It's like a tutor, which is really awesome. Overall, I give this a three out of five only because I am very happy with the creature base, but the mana base was so bad that if I didn't upgrade it out of the box, then I wouldn't have been able to play it and successfully win. The mana base was so bad, it needed upgraded immediately, so I don't think I would have done as well with that the first time if I didn't upgrade it immediately. And I would 100% buy this one again. It was worth the money, it was worth my time. My next one is Edgar Markov. I don't have a ton of experience playing this, I've played it a few times, but I have three players out of the six players in my playgroup that own this deck, so I have a lot of experience playing against it and playing with it, so I think I can give a good perspective of both sides. Starting off with the three I would take out before we get into that. So um, the creature base on this deck is very strong. This is an overall very strong deck coming straight out of the box. 
there are a lot of cards that you could easily put in there to make it better, but none of the cards in there are bad. They all have a really good synergy and they work well together. So yes, you can make it better, but it's not bad. It's strong still. You're only making it stronger. So we're gonna start with Bloodsworn, Bloodsworn Seward. I feel like this card is just really weak. It only gives a plus two plus two buff and it gives your commander haste, which would matter if Markov didn't have haste. If that was the case, then sure, but he does. So this is just a really weak buff. Um, I feel like it's a waste of space in this deck compared to all the other things that you could put in here. This just kind of doesn't really do much for me. Crimson Honor Guard is the next one. So I understand why this card is in this deck, but at the same time, I've seen it played and it never really gets a ton of damage. It's easy for people to make sure that their commanders are out and it's easy to not take the damage off of this. So I don't really feel like it gets its end goal and that being its only, its only point on being out is dealing the four damage. You know, someone might take it like one time and then be done. Moving on to the MVPs. So my first one is Anawan the Ruin Sage, and I actually got into a game the other day with my friend Johnny where I couldn't figure out how to get this card off the table, and that's a struggle that I feel like I have a lot of the time, is when he comes out, a lot of the time I can't deal with him and I can't explain why, but unless I'm playing Azor, I don't exactly have spot removal all the time. I don't have a way to get rid of things right off the bat. So this card stays out for a while and I become the victim of an empty board state because of it and I just have nothing out and I can't play anything until I get rid of it. So it definitely puts other players to a halt unless you can get rid of it immediately. It gets the effect you want, it gives you time to get ahead, and it gives you time to build your board state, which isn't hard um, with Markov. Okay, so the next one is Bloodlord of Vazgoth. I think Bloodthirst is a really neat mechanic in the way that, like, especially because this is a precon, it teaches new players how to play things in their second main phase. I got stuck in a really long period of time where I was only playing things in my first main phase and I didn't understand why I would have to change that. I definitely get the benefit of it now and I think it's a hard concept for other players to grasp when you first start that there's two times that you can play things. So giving the counters on creatures three counters of that, because this Bloodlord has Bloodthirst 3. Letting your creatures enter the battlefield with three counters on them if you just play them after combat, that's sweet. That's awesome. It lets your creatures come in with a buff already in a deck where you're just buffing your creatures like and swinging heavy, like it lets you come out with heavy creatures from the get-go and just be ready to swing out on everyone, like absurd. Drana Kalistra, Kalistria? Drana Kalistria, Drana Kalistria Blood Chief, Blood Chief. So not only does this creature have built-in spot removal as an activated ability that I don't even have to tap her for, but she buffs herself. She drains another creature and she buffs her. So you can literally get rid of as many creatures as you have the mana for and just swing huge on someone that can't block. Like, this is an absurd card. I've seen it being played, I've seen the effect it can have, and this card can wreck. It gets exactly what you want out of it. It lets you destroy things and swing heavy. This is what a vampire, this is the definition of a vampire, okay? This is the definition. So this is the real MVP of the Markov deck for sure. I love this card. So overall, I would rate this deck five out of five. Um, and I would definitely buy it again. I think out of the pre-build, straight out of the pre-build, this is the strongest deck. You can upgrade it to be a lot better, but it's really strong off the get-go and it's really competitive. You definitely can stand a chance playing against other players that have more experience than you. 
Uh, it has a lot of synergy and it melds really well together. I think the cards just work really well and definitely five out of five. The last one I don't even have notes on because this is going to be about two minutes of why Kalia the Vast is the worst pre-con that has ever existed. Okay, I love Kalia, genuinely. I know I suck. Okay, I know that everyone hates her, and I get booze as soon as I touch that card on the table and my death box is in my hand. I get it. Everyone hates Kalia. I suck, I don't understand that, but I love playing her. I love playing her, and this pre-build is terrible. There are so many cards that go off the theme of angels, demons, and dragons that they put in here that doesn't make any, any sense at all. It is just so off theme with what it's meant to be. I took so many cards out. The angels, demons, and dragons that they did choose were subpar. They were terrible. I found myself not even wanting to play them. Like I got to a point where I literally didn't even play her until I upgraded her because she was so bad. She was so bad straight off the bat. Like the first few games with her, I didn't do anything. Like it sucked. So the answer to the cards that I would take out is probably the entire creature base and there are no MVPs because this deck, this pre-con, pre-build sucks. Okay, but not recommend that you buy this pre-build. It would be so much easier to just build your own deck. This is very hard to upgrade due to the fact that you have to upgrade almost the entire thing. It is not worth the money and I would just recommend that you just build your own. If you want to build Kalia, just just build your own. Just build from scratch, okay? Just have a, have a nice cup of tea, sit in your computer on EDH rack and just, just chill. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a few other videos in the works that I'm excited about, but they're different from anything that I've ever done before in my experience, so they might take me a while to get out into the world but I'm excited about that if you like this please subscribe um, I'll put links to my social medias below and the last video that I posted about my Azor the Lawbringer deck tech so if you're interested in that please go check that out and thank you so much for watching